Ah. Hello, my good friends. Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Carpo's Rambles. I have a glass of wine here, and it's what you might call a prop. <laughs> In a way, I, I guess it would be considered a prop. I don't generally drink, especially not at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. But uh, it sounded good, so I grabbed it. And it got me thinking about lust versus leisure, versus addiction, versus casual use. And I'm not just talking about substances, I'm talking about everything that we do. So I'm going to indulge a little bit, and I'll explain. <laughs> I'm no expert on addiction, but I don't think anybody really is. I mean, there are people who study the mind, neuroscientists who can tell you, well, addiction, certain things trigger the reward system of the brain. We know that cocaine and video games are very similar in the mechanism of action and the way that you're, you crave more. Not just video games, but, you know, uh, addiction to gaming can be very strong. Uh, addiction to gambling and addiction to shopping. And then there are substances as well. Another one would be vaping, or smoking, anything else. So, <laughs> what I like to do is kind of compare and weigh the options, weigh the risks and the benefits of a certain substance that I'm choosing to consume. There aren't that many things that I take on a regular basis, but the ones I do, I'm pretty consistent with. Um, now, Kratom is one of the main things that I've been taking for years now. I take Kratom every day. And I've talked with a lot of people who have, you know, they've had concerns about their own Kratom use and said, look, I've been using Kratom for a year and I'm having a hard time stopping. Or um, maybe uh, they're just asking a question whether or not it is addictive. And my answer is always the same. It's, it's as addictive as anything else. Coffee, uh, cigarettes, it can be, it can give you some symptoms when you quit. Sure, and the longer you do any one thing the worse the symptoms can be. And if you're a heavy caffeine user and you quit, you'll get headaches and you'll feel like crap for a few days. But it's not going to kill you. That's the point. Um, heroin withdrawals, let's put it this way, or um, alcohol withdrawals can be horribly worse, even though they're si different substances. And this is why you can use Valium to overcome you know, alcoholic withdrawals. However, um, Valium withdrawals themselves can be severe, and the people that take Valium don't even realize that they're going through that. So, your brain s sort of starts to change its... Well, neuroplasticity is the word, that your brain adapts to whatever you do in life. But also, it uh, we tend to create excuses for ourselves and channels to do what, what we want to do. And in the meantime, we do find substances that help us, or even certain addictions or behaviors that we find beneficial but others may look and say hey you have a problem or think that a person's an addict I went through a probation uh, period when I got busted years ago for cannabis and uh, I've actually been through two different treatment programs and the second one the husband and wife that ran the thing it was a six month course outpatient but intensive outpatient like three times a week had to drive all the way out there and listen to these people talk that neither one of them had, had ever had a drug addiction in their lives. And every time we went to a break, they would go out and they'd smoke cigarettes out in front. And I'm sitting here saying, you know, God, these people just don't even know what they're talking about. They're book smart people on addiction. And those are the most, uh, you know, useless types when it comes to actually discussing it. Because I don't care how much, you know, it's like a... <clears throat> I heard somebody say, you know, you can read about Egypt for years, but taking one trip over there for a couple days can give you more information to take in than you can get in a lifetime of reading. Um, and this may not be generally 100% true. I mean, if you read enough, of course, you're going to gain a lot of knowledge, but the usefulness of seeing something and being in that situation uh, is far superior to, you know, reading about it. Um, an addict who's already been through something, you know, can understand. I've had addictions in my life that uh, I didn't even realize were a problem. So I'm very cautious about what I monitor and how I monitor my own intake of things. Now, with 
vaping is something I, you know, I quit smoking about two years ago for the last time, hopefully ever, um, and started vaping, and I said, you know, yeah, it's one crutch for another, but it's one that I find superior. Wine is not something I usually drink. Um, I, in the course of, you know, a year, I might buy one or two bottles of wine, but I do buy a few bottles of Jägermeister, especially when I go camping in the summer. Um, and I'll go through a period where maybe I'll have drinks for, you know, each night for a week, and then I won't drink for like six months. Um, because I don't really find alcohol that interesting. It's almost too alluring, because I know where addictions lead. And I say, you know, alcohol is the easiest thing to acquire. It's the one thing I don't want to become addicted to. So, the more you consume something, the more enjoyable it can become. Your body builds up that. <laughs> Ooh, here we go again. Uh, and this is what addiction is. But, I didn't really want to make this necessarily just about addiction, but really about how do you know when you have taken the proper amount of something, as opposed to abusing it. And, it's like they say, the poison and the cure, you know, it's all in the dose. And then I was just talking with some people earlier about this in a Facebook group about uh, they posted something about poisons and poison plants and you know I, I was mentioning Dale Pendle's work which is Pharmacognosis, Pharmacopoeia, and Pharmacodynamis which are three part kind of books that not necessarily three parts but three different books that are all in the same class of talking about plant compounds and theogens and all different types of you know fascinating stuff about plants but uh, <coughs> the way that they affect our minds, and uh, uh, it, it seems to be that way with everything, not just plants or drugs, that you can give yourself a certain amount of anything in life. It's all about balance. And so I wouldn't say that a person should be lush and abuse things, but I also wouldn't say you should be an ascetic, which, you know, like Buddha or Siddhartha, you know, he saw that the world was corrupt, he went out and he was an ascetic for seven years. You know, whether or not it's a true story, it doesn't matter. It's the metaphor and the story that carried on that matters. He went out and decided to deprive himself of anything good for seven full years of his life and realized in the end it was a mistake. That what really matters is balance and love and understanding. Wisdom, Satori, awakening. And I'm not a Buddhist, but I practice more of a Zen mindset because I believe that life kind of throws funny things at us. And, there's only so much we can do about it. And how each individual is so unique that our addictions are unique along with us and our desires for what we find interesting. Just like foods, just like men and women, there's like the way that we see each other and some people are attracted to someone that you just don't understand you know, what the attraction is but it's there and they have it and that's all that matters. Um, <clears throat> as long as a person doesn't let themselves get consumed by what they do is you know that's an important thing there's nothing wrong with having a cup, couple cups of coffee every day for the rest of your life but if you drink five pots a day it might become a problem over time and likewise you know I was a cannabis smoker for well for 25 years now and I still smoke daily but I don't smoke nearly as much as I used to you know I'll take like a dab here and a toke there but uh, I really revere the clear mind and almost living at that balanced level. Because to me, being, even though I know I can feel better now, let's say if I took some substance, even if I know, uh, let's say I could get a prescription that would put me always in a blissful state for a period of time, I know how, you know, antidepressants and anxiolytics work. Give you Valium, for example. I could take Valium and feel great for months, but then when I quit, I'll go through a period where that balance is weighed out. So I want to make sure that I'd rather remain mostly neutral, just kind of floating up and above and below baseline all the time, rather than uh, <coughs> you know going in the extreme highs and lows. Same reason I don't drink heavily. I might have a drink, but I'm not going to wake up in the morning with a hangover and feel shitty all day. It's not worth it. Horrible. I hate hangovers. Good. Wanted to make sure the camera was still going and I still had some time. <sighs> you know, coming out and talking about addictions and talking about consumption, you know, it's not something, it, you know, some people out there, especially, you know, younger 
younger guys who don't, who aren't as, um, uh, well, let's just say more bold. When I was young, I wore pot leaf shirts everywhere I went. You know, you won't see me wearing a big pot leaf tie dye anymore, even though it's legal here now, and that, you know, I still smoke it, and I still love it just as much. And it's just that I realize that drugs aren't something that should be necessarily proud of, you know? But when you're in a group, and you're consuming it when you're young, uh, of course you're going to be in a group. I loved the whole 420 thing, and drawing pot leaves at school, and, you know, I just loved weed, and... I wrote my high school like thesis uh, on like <laughs> on weed, and I did it without even using references because I just was into it so much. But uh, the whole thing about drugs is uh, coming out here and talking about it like this, you know, opening yourself up and saying, "Yeah, I consume substances." Um, a lot of people don't understand that, and and they see it as a horrible thing. But I'm asking, you know, myself, what's more important, my happiness and what I know to be true and enjoyable, or what somebody else thinks is true, you know. Um, I've seen, you know, I go to concerts in the summertime and take psychedelics, and even in the wintertime, of course, too, but even when I'm not at a concert a f few times a year, I'll take MDMA or LSD or psilocybin, uh, 2CB, a couple times recently, um, and go into kind of a, a, a very personal state. I don't necessarily go out and rave. I don't like to go to concerts and take it. I like to sit back with my eyes closed and ask the universe what it can show me through my own subconscious. And by doing that, I've opened up my mind to what's really important. And there's a few things that I know. Not things that I believe, but that I know. Things like how we manifest and uh, this idea that the borders really exist and that people really have power and the structure of society is given just by our own desire to believe it. Um, everything could fall apart if people stopped obeying and nobody's forced to obey, if you know what I mean. But the system we've put in play is so crazy and so detailed and so integrated and, and deep. But um, more than that, seeing not just society but seeing myself in my own role and realizing that we're all one that when my neighbor suffers I suffer you know through a psychedelic journey I can find out that uh, you know one immigrant you know helping one family with a dying child uh, the possibility of that to me is more important than just what if a terrorist gets in in other words that's and, and small things like that are why I, I might hold the views I do and that those differences and understanding why we have those differences are really important that to me one human life is really important if I know I can save it as opposed to maybe somebody might get hurt from somebody else entering the US and that's why I would you know have my view on like immigration I'm not saying, I'm not one of those guys that thinks we should open our borders up. I, nobody really believes that, and I shouldn't have even gone there because that's politics, but it was my example of these little things that you start to understand about yourself, um, and uh, so that's why I do psychedelics. But to a person who's never done psychedelics, they wouldn't even be able to comprehend that. They don't understand how you can see those little things, and a lot of people who take them don't see those things. It's not for everyone. If you're not already a philosopher, Psychedelics aren't going to make you a philosopher. And if you're not already a motivated person, then cannabis isn't going to be to blame for your lack of motivation. It's my example of why drugs aren't as bad as people make them out to be. That if you're, all, you know, cannabis can help a person to be inspired, or they can help a person to sit and watch TV and eat potato chips. <laughs> or um, psychedelics can help a person go out and rave, or they can help a person look inside themselves and see who they are. And even alcohol, the lowly alcohol addiction that people have is a very tough one because it's considered appropriate, um, which it's it's really not. Small amounts are okay. The one thing I found is if I have a couple drinks in the evening, it relaxes me and it'll get me hungry. And I have kind of a low appetite already, so uh, that can actually benefit me in the long run. Uh, but if I drink more than that, it's it's a bad thing. You know, I, I'll feel crappy later, or maybe get a headache, and uh, same way with anything. You take too much, you're going to damage yourself, and I didn't even get into shopping and all that. 
shopping addiction is for somebody else. I'm going to see how much time I have left here. <laughs> yeah, the idea of uh, my camera is broken, piece of crap now. Um, oh, I wanted to say thanks before I forget for the people who donate on Patreon. I think that was awesome. I haven't really checked it in a while, and there's a few people on there. I'm, I'm kind of lazy about, like, saying thanks. Maybe it's because I don't want to sit there. Maybe it's because at the same time I subconsciously don't want to, like, you know, sound like I'm trying to say, hey, I have a Patreon account. But some people asked me, hey, can I make a donation to your channel? And I started the Patreon account, and there's only a few people on there, but it's really cool to know that uh, I'm going to use that money to buy the new camera, because so, this one's a piece of shit. I'm going to try to get, uh, maybe not buy a new camera, but at least a decent microphone, because this one kind of echoes. And I figure, you know, I might as well. If I'm going to make videos this long, I might as well make, you know, decent videos with a good microphone and stuff. So I've got a green screen back there I was going to use, but my wife's like, dude, this backdrop's actually better. And she's right, you know. This is who I am. Um, <laughs> anyway, it's been good talking to y'all. Talking to myself, talking to the camera. And I always appreciate all your responses. And um, I hope everybody has a wonderful day. And remember that addiction isn't the biggest problem. Um, w we all have addictions one way or another. It's whether or not you can control your addictions and keep them at a level that helps you. And if you have no addictions, good for you. That's great. My, belief, my thought is if you have no addictions whatsoever, it must be a very... Um, a very... I don't know. I don't know what life would be but like without some kind of addiction, I guess. Um, maybe it'd be super freeing, but I, I, I see behaviors as addictions, so it becomes very difficult to distinguish, you know. Uh, anyhow, I'll, I'll talk to y'all later. Have a wonderful day. Peace.